Hey friends, welcome back to the cabin and today we're going to be rendering beeswax. Well, I wanted to bring you along today as I render some beeswax that I had left over from the last time that we harvested honey. Now, the way that I harvest honey is I don't have an extractor per se, but what I do is I just actually scrape the honey and the comb off of the frame into some filtering bags, and it's actually five gallon paint filtering sacks that I put over five gallon buckets. And what I do is I actually squeeze the honey out of that and I strain it a couple of times and I'm left with a nice amount of beeswax but the beeswax can be dirty it can be old it can have bee parts in it it can just look kind of yucky and trashy and you might wonder how can you take something that looks that bad and turn it into that beautiful golden yellow clean block of beeswax and I'm going to show you my technique right here and it's very simple so let me gather my supplies and I'll get you over here and show you how it's done Okay, so as you can see here, it's just going to take just a few simple supplies for you to start rendering beeswax at home. And what I would suggest to you, if you don't have your own bees, if you have someone that lives close to you that has hives, maybe they don't want to fool with rendering beeswax and they just toss it out, that would be a great source for you to be able to gather up some beeswax. Now you can gather it and store it in like a a five gallon plastic bucket and seal it and just keep adding to it till you get enough that you think that you can render. But we do actually have one beehive right now. So this is some that was left over from this past summer and I knew that it was a busy time and I was just going to put it up and when I had time and things slowed down, then I was going to render my beeswax. So back again to the supplies. You will need a dedicated pot of some sort because the, uh, it's going to be nearly impossible to get all the wax out of the pot. So I have here, this is a very cheap stainless steel pot that I'd gotten at Walmart a long, long time ago and I just don't use it very often. So I'm actually going to dedicate today this to uh, beeswax from here forward and also I've got just a little inexpensive spoon that I can use to stir with and also a very inexpensive strainer that we're going to strain some of the trash out as we go along now all of these you won't be able to use in your kitchen again most likely because of the uh, residue that's going to be on them from the beeswax another option to render your beeswax is to do it in an old crock pot that you may have picked up at a yard sale or the thrift store and that you're going to just keep it just for that for rendering your beeswax okay so what we have here like i said we've got our pot our spoon and our filter our strainer and i'm going to actually put about uh, a third of this pot in water and then we're going to add the beeswax to that we're going to heat it up and that's how we're going to start rendering it so let me get my water Okay, so now we've got our water, and I'm going to go ahead and turn this on because I want it to go ahead and start heating. And we're going to start it on uh, close to high, but we're not going to stay there because we don't want to uh, bring the, the beeswax itself up to a very high temperature, but we want to go ahead and start warming the water. Now I'm going to show you something on this beeswax here. Now some of this wax actually has a little bit of mold on it. That is not a problem. We're going to clean all that out of there. It's not going to hurt a thing. But this actually on this, you see this is kind of an old dirty looking piece of honeycomb. But this on here is actually not mold. This is called wax blossom. And you can tell the difference, even though it's a little powdery looking, is that you can kind of wipe it and, and it will smudge like that and wax blossom <clears throat> is not a problem at all that's a good thing actually it just talks about a little bit more moisture content into your in in your wax okay but you see this right here this is not a very pretty piece of wax and you're thinking how is that going to turn into something beautiful but we're going to do that so i'm just going to hold this bucket up here and we're just going to start throwing all this trashy looking beeswax in there and I'm not going to overfill this. I'm going to let it melt down a little bit and add more as I need to or as I can. Get it started and then we'll add some more. Okay, so we're going to let that start melting down. One thing that you don't want to do 
is to leave your wax unattended because wax is very, very flammable. As a matter of fact, some of the trash that I gather out of this, I can set it out to dry and I'll put it in coffee filters, tie it up with jute, and it makes great fire starters in the fireplace. We try to find as many ways as possible for things to go full circle around here, and that's just another example of that. In a previous video, I show how I render lard, and in that video, I stress that I don't use water, and the reason that I don't is because I don't want the opportunity for mold to build up in, in my lard, and I have had that happen in the past where I lost lard because I didn't get quite all the moisture cooked out or boiled out of it. So I actually do it without water. And I'll link to that video here if you'd like to go see how I do that. But this is a completely different process being that I'm using water and it's also not a consumable. It's not, um, it's not fat from an animal. It's an actual wax. So we're not going to have a problem with mold because the water will completely separate from the wax. There will be none left behind as far as in the wax itself. So that's not a problem. And I love the fact that my beeswax comes from my bees. We know each step is it came from the beehive manufactured by our bees, came into our home, we were actually able to render it. That's another way that things go full circle around here. Okay, so this is cooked down a little bit and you can see it's kind of yucky looking. I'm fixing to add some more wax to this. I'm so excited to be able to show you this because you're just going to be amazed that you can take this brown, mucky, muddy looking, watery stuff and make a beautiful block of beeswax. Here's a big old chunk. We're going to go ahead and put it in there. I think I'm just going to go ahead and pour the rest of this in there. also meant to point out a while ago that you want to have something down to lay your utensils on because you don't want to lay them on your counter because of the, the, the wax that can stick to your counters. But what we're going to do now, I'm going to go ahead and turn my stove off. And I'm actually going to start pulling out the trash and I'm just going to put it in this coffee can just to save it and later I'll use it to make my fire starters with. So There's all kind of things in here. There's probably uh, some wax moth debris. We had one, um, one hive that we had split last year that just never did really take off. It wasn't healthy and we ended up losing that one and it was, uh, there was a lot of problems but one of them was wax moth and I think I did clean some of the frames and save some of that wax in with this as well. So. But you can see we're just going to scoop it out. Let it drip a little bit. Let it strain. As a matter of fact, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm even going to take my spoon. Didn't do it on the first one. But I'm going to do it on this one. I'm going to press it a little bit because we don't want to lose any of that wax. And I actually forgot to do it on the first one. So. We're just going to press it a little bit. And that's how it's done. one of the greatest transformations as far as taking a product from the homestead that looks like absolute waste and turning it into something beautiful. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and fi finish pulling all of this debris off and I'll be back with you in just a, a bit and I'll show you the next steps. 
Well, this is actually day two. What I ended up doing after I had rendered this down last night, it was getting a little bit later in the evening, so I decided that I would just let it sit on the stove, cool off overnight, and then start again today. So I decided to bring it outside because I'm gonna pour off the water, the dirty water, and you don't want to pour that down your drain pipes for sure because it does have a lot of trash in it and also it does have beeswax and built up beeswax can clog your pipes. So what I'm gonna do is actually we have an old burn pile over here on the side and I'll just pour it off over, over into there. So as I tip that up, you can see the water kind of did come over it as I moved it, but you can see the wax disc in there and it is a beautiful golden yellow, but it is not clean by any means. So let me take it out and kind of show you what we got going on here. We got some more clarifying to do. You can see that it still has some trash in it. Then you look on the back side, you can see it's got a lot of trash in it. And this is some, uh, we had some wax brood, <clears throat> some brood boxes, brood frames that the wax moth had gotten to. And I just scraped all the wax off and everything. And so you can see some of the pupa from that. We're going to get this cleaned off. And I'm going to go pour this water off. And I'll start back in the house. I'll bring you back in the house and we'll go to the next step. So before I put this circle of wax back in the pot to melt it back down. I wanted to show you a trick that you can do to go ahead and get some more of this trash off. This is actually on the bottom side and you can take an, the cheaper, the older the spoon, actually the cheaper the spoon the better because they have kind of a sharper rougher edge and you can just take and kind of dig in and scrape some of this off and that's going to help as far as when you re-clarify it in the pot you're going to have a little bit less you're going to have to strain off. So I'm going to work on this for just a second and I'll bring you back and show you what I do to start melting it down again. Okay, so I wanted to show you kind of what it looked like after I scraped some of the trash off the bottom. It really made a big difference. It's not near as dirty. So we're going to have a cleaner start when we start remelting this wax down. Now what I've done is I've actually put about another third of a pot of water in here and I'm going to put this wax back down in there. And we're going to turn the flame on. We're going to leave it on high for just a minute or two to kind of go ahead and get the heat building up. Then we'll turn it back down to kind of a simmer. And we're going to melt this wax down. And what that's going to do is separate some more of the trash. And actually, I'll probably do this this time, maybe one more time. And then we'll strain it through some cheesecloth or uh, maybe some old um, hose or something, pantyhose or something like that. So we can really, really purify it right there in the end. Okay, so we've got this melted down really, really good. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the flame off just like that. Going to go ahead and get my, my trash bucket and you can see that it's got quite a bit of trash in it, but you can also see in the in my pot that it is already so much cleaner than it was the first time around. Just much, much cleaner. And as I scoop it, we're not getting much of anything out. So I think after this, we're going to let this cool. I'm going to scoop out as much as I can. We're going to clean it up as, as best that we can and get a little bit more of this trash out of here. And then when I strain it, that'll get the final trash. If it cleans up pretty good this time, I may not have to clarify it again. This is really cleaning up. I'm just so happy. I don't know if you can tell. Uh, yeah, you can tell pretty good from the overhead shot that it's really clarifying. So I'm thinking, I'm just going to be able to strain it. I'm going to let it cool a little bit. Oh, my coffee's starting to perk and it smells wonderful. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go get everything set up for me to go ahead and strain it because we have really got this good and clean uh, except for some very fine particles in there. We're going to strain it and then we're going to let it cool off and I'm going to show you the final beautiful product. So I'll be back with you in just a bit. Okay, now so what I've decided to do is to go ahead and strain this and I didn't have uh, a piece of old pantyhose like I thought I did and I don't have any cheesecloth. So I'm going to take one of my milk straining rags, it's got a stain on it, and I'm going to actually put it on this. This is a, um, 
actually the crock pot that I've used for small batches of making beeswax this is the crock out of that and I'm gonna strain into that so we're just gonna put it across here and we're gonna put a few clothespins on here and what this will do because remember we still have the water in here as well well the, it'll do the same thing it'll separate from the water the wax will come to the top and we should have a beautiful clean purified uh, mound of wax so let's go ahead and do that and let's see how that works out I'm gonna try to do it where you can see it I'm not really sure maybe from this angle let's try this Let's see how this works out. Now I did preheat the crock with some hot water because this is very hot liquid going in. It is straining really well. I wasn't sure how it's going to strain through this cloth, but it's really doing good. So let's see where we are on that. And if I have to heat it up a tad, I will. Oh, it's doing good, yeah. That's going to be just about my limit. So what I'm going to do is take this rag, hold it up, and let the rest of that drip out. So then what I'll do is I'll actually set the crock in the refrigerator. That'll allow it to solidify a lot faster so I can show you that final product. So I'll be back with you in just a bit and show you what we ended up with. Well, I wanted to show you how beautiful this wax turned out. Now, this is still a tad bit warm, so I'm going to try to gently lift it out, and we're going to turn it over and look at the back and see how clean the back is. But if you see this here, you can tell, even from the first time that we rendered down, how much cleaner it turned out this time. So let's see what we've got on the back. Oh, I'm so excited to see what it looks like. There's the front. And as you can see the back, it has a very minute, just a little bit of discoloration on the bottom. And I absolutely can live with this because what I'll do is probably just scrape that off or as I use it, I'll just take and make sure that I'm, I'm clean all of that off. Like I said before, it's not for commercial purposes, it's for my own personal use. And I just want you to see how beautiful this block of wax turned out. And you saw how ugly that wax was to start with. And I just want to encourage you to do the same thing. It's just a few simple steps, no special equipment whatsoever, just a couple of old things that you want to dedicate just to your wax, to rendering your wax down, and that's all it takes. And if you have hives or if you have access to some free beeswax, no matter how dirty it is, then I really encourage you to try this because it is a wonderful product from the homestead. Now, as I said before, I've got some upcoming videos that I'll be making on how I use my beeswax, spoon butter, the uh, beeswax wraps, and I actually thought of something else a while ago and I can't think of what it is now, but I also use it in my soap. But um, I actually thought of something else, so it'll be a surprise video. If you have some thoughts, some, some suggestions or questions about this beeswax making process please feel free to uh, comment below and also if you're not a subscriber I encourage you to subscribe we really want you to jump on board with us we're having a lot of fun with this journey on the homestead and and also if you got some value from this be sure to hit that like button and you know my favorite thought at the end of these videos is don't ever forget that your Heavenly Father loves you and I'll see you on the next video God bless